today unto our hope to seize the hope set before us. And I can live higher because of the risen sun. My life is fuller because of what God's done. I am complete in Christ. He makes me Welcome to the Door of Hope. It's a pleasure to be with you. Last week, um, I talked about the call to maturity and growth being the most important thing that we can uh, determine for our lives as Christians to mature in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And out of that springs, it's always spirit first. I pray your spirit, your soul, and your body be preserved blameless. And when we get number one, the stake in the ground right, the rest falls into place. So we we're called to mature. And as we mature, we gain more of him, of things I've had my fill but I hunger still for more of him. Uh, sometimes I've had an argument with a friend or two. You know, they take it as a, you know, it's just Christ did it and he kind of dumps it on you and uh, you just have it and uh, uh, grab hold of it, sis. But no, it's growth. It's, it's growth in him and it's maturity. And one of the names for God is the God of hope. And I thought, you know, there it is in my life. If, you, if I took that, that hope that I have in God, in Christ, that all things will work together for good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. If I lay hold of the God of hope, how it settles my nerves and the anxieties that bombard us day and night. Lord, our hope is in you. Our trust is in you. And I like the verse in uh, Hebrews as we continue in that book. It says, let us go on towards perfection. Let us go on to perfection. We hope in him. And it says that it's a hope that does not disappoint. He won't disappoint. I can't say, I haven't found the journey easy. Um, you know, and, and some of the problem is that I, I didn't really receive much practical advice on how it really works. Uh, and, you know, we neglect the reading of scriptures, and there it is, and they, they're there in the pages, but somehow in our nature we, we can't absorb what it says, and we get sidetracked. And, um, and yet the God of hope calls us to go on to perfection, and perfection is the best. Let's face it. He that has shall have more, and he shall have an abundance. And I, nothing can come against uh, God's blessing and favor on your life. I, like in the um, Old Testament, there was light in Goshen. When they were uh, passing through the Red Sea, it parted. They moved forward. And that's that life and journey of the spirit, is that we move forward. We, we don't have to languish back in our mistakes. One thing I do, forgetting that which is past, is another gorgeous verse, because we all make mistakes. But we are laying hold of him because he laid hold of us. And it is the God of hope. It is a path that we are moving and going on to perfection. And it says, through faith and patience, inherit the pro promises. And there's that in, earlier in the verse, it said, confident of better things in your case. I will surely bless you and multiply you. And thus Abraham, having patiently endured, obtained the promise. Do you have a promise in your, on your heart? I know I have it on mine, and I'm moving towards it. And I know that nobody but me can lay hold of him to obtain it. And firstly, people don't care about your, the desires of your heart. Uh, for me, it is to be fruitful. I have enjoyed so much uh, the pleasures of being saved and born again and being helped by God Almighty by being given life instead of death. I was healed twice. And that is a hope within me that I can share this marvelous news with the world that God gave his life, that we might have life and have it in abundance. And uh, we want to shout that from the rooftop, that we have not believed in vain. And Abraham had a rough time and made his mistakes. 
but he inherited the promises. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And he's called the father of faith. He's called the father of faith. We're not the father of faith. Abraham is the father of faith. And uh, some of his uh, disappointments and mistakes are mentioned so that we can uh, not repeat his mistakes, but we can gain courage and strength to know we don't move forward getting it always right. But we lay hold of him, the God of hope, door of hope. And we don't want to despair. We don't want to despair and give up, but we want to press forward to the mark of the prize of the upward call in Christ Jesus. Why? To lay hold of him. Why? Because he has first laid hold of us. It's all in the New Testament. It's the journey. It's a journey of faith. And God would prove, uh, would give, we who have taken refuge might be strongly encouraged to seize the hope set before us. We have this hope, a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, a hope that enters the inner shrine behind the curtain where Jesus, a forerunner on our behalf, has entered having become a high priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. So Jesus from Abraham blessed him and received the promises. I want to receive the promises of God. And then carrying on in chapter 7, it says, there on the other hand, the introduction of a better hope through which we approach God. And it goes on and saying a better covenant. But he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever, consequently is able for all times to save those who approach God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. So we, we, our faith is sounded up, founded upon the solid rock. Our hope is in Christ. And our hope is not where we put a stake in the ground and say, well, 30 years ago this happened to me. I've known some people like that, that largely their uh, testimony was great, but rather stale. And it shouldn't be that way. There was fresh manna every day, fresh promises of God. And I, I, I want to live life to the fullest. I want to succeed in what I am led to do. I want to hope in Christ. I want to, you know, lift my hands and sing praises unto him and say, Lord, a uh, 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 simple handmaiden of the Lord, who really I've had look at many times in my life, all I had was him. Uh, I was widowed at a young age. I had no biblical understanding. I hadn't read the Bible till in my 20s. Didn't know what scriptures, didn't know even how to read it. Had, I had no biblical knowledge except some characters of the Bible that I recognized. And one day I opened up the pages and some theology books and I began to find the answers for my life, that my hope was in Christ, that all things do work together for good to those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. And I became addicted to these words of life, uh, which I generally read a, a little bit every morning uh, because it clears my head. It gives me strength and health, happiness, and uh, that endurance to move ahead. And one thing I do, forgetting that which is past, and that uh, marvelous uh, path of faith that does produce uh, something that we can say, glory, 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 hallelujah. Uh, you know, as you know, my two sons are on the program with me. And uh, what, a, what a treasure for a woman who's widowed at 23 with two small children and before that, uh, the death of a son. And uh, I could have uh, been overcome or taken by that and sunk, but yet I, I felt that uh, day uh, when Dustin passed that I lifted my hands unto God, could feel his presence. And I said from my heart, Lord, I want to walk the path you want me to walk. Where that came from, somewhat strange, but I believe it was the Holy Spirit uh, speaking to my heart and offering me life. And that's what he's there for, to offer each and every one of us. All things do work together for good to those who love him. I'll see Dustin again. I'll be, we shall be known as we were known. But I, I, as I'm living here on this path and working it out, it's the God of hope that inspires me. 
that if I walk according to his plan, he'll speak to me. Uh, he's in the driver's seat, not me. I can't figure it out. But I can touch the hem of his garment and feel his presence and know that all things do work together for good to those who love God or are called according to his purpose. Why would we throw that away? Why would we settle for wood, hay, and stubble? Why would we uh, settle for wood, hay, and stubble, stubble when we have manna in the wilderness? And... Uh, uh, saint after saint had their trials. We all do, but we lay hold of him and we move out of that darkness and sorrow and pain. Uh, the oil of joy was the book instead of mourning. I received joy, joy in the spirit. It's never left me. I don't have to work at uh, being happy most of the time. It's just a given gift that there was a replacement from sorrow to joy. We replace our our sin for his righteousness. We can even replace, I believe, our, our poor health for having that touch of mercy. Remember, they went forward in the accounts of Jesus and Peter and that, and uh, uh, they asked the blind person, you know, what happened? He said, oh, I, don't, I don't know. All I know, I was blind and now I see. And what we reap in our life is in our destiny that is the negative being turned into positive. So if you're going through a bad space, knowing that that's exactly what God can use in your life to bring the deepest, deepest blessing. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's not an accident. It, God, uh, he has a way of blessing us beyond our expectation, our belief, anything that we could ever... It says, Jesus now obtained a more excellent ministry. And to that degree, he is a mediator of a better covenant, which has been enacted through better promises. Better promises. Imagine that. I want... How much more will the blood of Christ to through the eternal covenant... Uh, covenant offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to worship the living God. To worship the living God. Isn't that wonderful? And going on in the 10th chapter, and my friends, we have this confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain that is, through his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach God with a true heart and full assurance of faith and having our hearts sprinkled from a evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And that's what I found God to be faithful, not a path I would uh, choose, but faithful, a path that worked. And we think of Abraham, my righteous one will live by faith. My soul takes no pleasure in anyone who shrinks back. And without faith, it is impossible to please God for whoever would approach him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. He rewards us in our the language of the spirit. If we take the negative and the pain and the sorrow and the need and learn to draw close to him and grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, listen for his voice. Uh, my sheep hear my voice to be led of him. And I'm still in that path where daily I pray, Lord, your will and not my will be done. May it be a path of success. May I move forward. May I receive that abundance. He that has shall have more and he shall have an abundance. May we receive that abundance in him. May we leave this one thing I do, forgetting that which is past. May we move forward and see that all things do work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And we're all called, we're brethren. He gave his life that we might have life and have it in abundance. And that's the message of the gospel, that all things do work together for good to those who love him. And we can come before him with nothing in our hands, really, uh, that we offer except our broken lives and our need 
uh, to be transformed, our need to grow in grace, and our need to be blessed by God, because we have the world, the flesh, and the devil that is against us. But God, he says, I, my spirit I put within you, and I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And I, that's what prayer is all about, is making that connection. It's more than a shopping list. As much as I get the list, I do it myself. But it's more than that. It's touching the hem of his garment and being made whole and saying, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. It, you know, I think sometimes we've, we've forgotten the basics or we have lost our focus and just become too materialistic in our faith or I don't know, something that isn't quite the right order of things. You know, we're sheep of his pasture, prone to wander, prone to go astray. But God has come. He said, I've come to give you life and life abundantly. And we want to live. We want to live. And God is a God of the miraculous. God is a God. He fed them with manna. And then on the Sabbath, they had enough for to cover that. He doesn't want us to be without. He wants to do the miraculous for him. But we don't get it simply by naming it and claiming it, but from our hearts, reaching out to him and serving him. And, you know, the prayer above all prayers, Lord, your will and not be not my own will. And without faith, it's impossible to please him. If we would approach him, believe he exists, he rewards those. Then that gold verse I read before, by faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out not knowing where he was going. So we don't know the details. We know that we put our hand in the master's hand and by his grace and mercy, we are made whole. I would that you would prosper be in health even as your soul prospers. Let us not neglect the prosperity of our relationship and the growth of our relationship with God, the prosperity of our soul, where you say, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Lord, I uh, give you my life, and I pray above all, thy will be done. Thy will be done. So Lord, we pray together because we want to lay hold of you because you have laid hold of us. And those promises are the answer for our lives. Great and precious promises that you came to give life and to give it in abundance. And we have missed the assurance of your words of life. You say, my sheep hear my voice, and we want to hear your voice, O Lord. And we do want our prayers answered because we believe that you say come, come boldly before the throne room of grace to receive help in time of need. And we want to lift our hearts, our whole being to the things of the spirit of God to receive, to be blessed, to be made whole. And Lord, we're going to leap and dance and we're going to give you all the honor and glory all the days of our lives because uh, Lord, there's nothing better than that walk of faith, that putting our hand in your hand and experiencing the power of your love, Lord Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. And oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. And heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. And this is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. 
perfect submission, perfect delight. With visions of rapture now burst on my sight. With angels descending, ring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praise Him, my Savior, all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praise Him, my Savior, all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior, happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Praising my Savior all the day long. Hello, it's good to be with you once again. Today we are reflecting upon the hope that is before us. It somehow seems an appropriate theme for a program titled The Door of Hope because we speak about hope an awful lot in our shared reflection with you. What do we hope for, though? Well, we hope for, at our very core, to grow closer with God and to not be burdened down by the cares of this world. Now, the truth is that as Christians and as spiritual people, in a way, we live in two realms. We live in the here and now with the demands of the lives that we live. And we live as children of God who are a part of the kingdom of God that eternal promise from Christ. And it's very easy to have these in tension with one another. We worry about our health and the things we need to do as we go through the years. We worry about our relationships. We worry about status. We worry about how we're perceived in the world. And we worry about our relationships. And it can bog us down. Now, these things are not unimportant. Jesus addressed them in his ministry. He healed the sick. He fed the hungry, as well as teaching and offering wisdom about the kingdom of God. And I think that this is something that we should hold firm in our convictions and in our faith and in our lives. Yes, we can be distracted by the worries of this world, but we are called to more. We are called to those things of the kingdom of God, where we proclaim justice, where we live in light, where we live according to those commands and instructions Jesus gave us to turn the other cheek, to forgive 70 times, seven times, and to walk with others in need. And I think one of the models of this in Jesus' ministry is when he healed the man that was born lame. The man that was born lame came to him with need. Jesus healed him. He told him to get up and walk. And he said to him, your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you whole. What those words remind us of is that this physical reality that we live is not separate from our spiritual reality. God gave us both. God gave us life. 
But God also made us spiritual beings who are called to walk with him. And we've been spending some time in the book of Hebrews lately, a rich book. I would encourage you to read it yourself from time to time. It speaks to a mature community in Christ, really wrestling with what it means to live out that gospel message in ways of substance, meaning, and in ways that have impact in the followers of Jesus' lives. And as we do that, we see one of the great lines of Hebrews, faith is the things, faith is things hoped for, the substance of things unseen. And that really is that reminder that we are spiritual beings and we do not separate our physical self from our spiritual self. And we should understand this in our world today. We see many people who are physically healthy, who have an abundance of wealth and who have meaning in their lives, who suffer from depression, who talk about the struggle of their existence. Often we see this in the peoples that are stars of the day that talk about how hard they have it. And many of us look at that and we wonder, well, they have so much more than we have. How can they have challenges? And I would suggest that one of the disconnects of our modern existence is that we think it is all about the here now, about the self, about these bodies we dwell in. But we are called to more. We are called to be children of God. We are called to walk in light. We are called to be spiritual beings, which remember that lives of prayer, lives of service, and lives of focus on Christ guide us always. Thank you, Darcy. We're here to pray with you on the prayer line. We want to move forward, pressing towards the mark of the prize of the upward call. God bless you. My books really explain that journey of of growth and hope in Christ, a hope that will never, never disappoint. So call the prayer line and we will stand with you. God bless you. The beauty of Jesus is always around me. I see his wonderful work in the surrounding beauty. We trust this program has been a door of hope for you and we encourage you to call the prayer line. Door of Hope is entirely viewer supported. It is your financial gifts that allow us to remain on the air. All gifts payable to Rhonda Lazert Ministries are tax deductible. For more information on Rhonda Lazert Ministries or to order one of Rhonda's books or steal CDs, please call 905 901 2048 or visit us on the web at doorofhope.ca. Our mailing address is Rhonda Lazert Ministries, Post Office Box 67, Lakeshore West, Oakville, Ontario, L6K0A3. 